morning, Maple Ridge Christian Reformed Church family and friends. It is Easter morning, and he is risen. Jesus Christ is alive and working in our lives, and we are excited to be with you this morning in your homes or wherever you might be to celebrate this story, this beautiful story of Jesus Christ alive and risen. So what we're going to do is we're going to worship the risen God. Let me pray. God, I thank you for Easter. I thank you for the story of the cross. I thank you that it's working in our lives. That, Father, the story of your goodness and your love, that you died on that cross and rose again for our iniquities, for our sins, so that we could be made right in God's eyes. Father, I thank you that you are our bridge, and I thank you for what you've done. Would we worship you this morning? We pray this in your name. Amen. So if you could, uh, follow the link and listen to the first three songs of the worship playlist, and let's worship together a risen God. Amen. So I'd like to read with you the Easter story. We're going to Matthew chapter 28, and let's read that story together. Matthew 28. After the Sabbath, at dawn, the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He is risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you in Galilee. There, there you will see him, now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, collapsed to his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the word of the Lord. And the Easter story that we celebrate this morning, the story of a God who's been crucified, and is risen. A few announcements for you this morning. One is, is we are very encouraged by the continued response to Facebook, to Instagram, to our website. We appreciate your comments. We appreciate you sharing the content. And we're encouraged that you continue to do, to do that. So we would, we would encourage you, if you haven't checked it out, uh, please go to those social media platforms or our website where we're updating it daily. And that's where you'll find a lot of the content, a lot of what we're doing and we're going to continue to do. We'd also just like you to know that we are not in office uh, very much at all. So if you are trying to get a hold of us, the best way to do that is, is by email. Uh, if you're trying to get a hold of Grace, email her as she's not going to be in the office to receive calls. Lastly, a service opportunity. So in our community, uh, a number of different churches are joining forces, so to speak, working together, uh, finding different ways to deliver food, help seniors run errands for isolated individuals, and so many more opportunities. If you're interested, if you, your family are interested in volunteering, would you contact our church office 
And what we're hoping to do is to put together a list of people that would be willing to serve and volunteer in our community in different capacities. And then we'll send that information to Dennis at Youth Unlimited and coordinate ways in which we can serve this community in this time of crisis. We thank you for considering that. And if you would, send an email in to Grace and we'll get in touch with you when we have that list. So the children's message. As many of you probably have known, I sent a message to a lot of parents yesterday, hoping to get a video of a one-word answer describing who Jesus is. And so what I'd like to do is to show you that video. Here's a bunch of kids in our community who in one word are describing who Jesus is. Take a look. Good morning. What is one word that you would use to describe Jesus? Church. Loving. Teacher. Peace. Good. I think of Holy Spirit. Savior. Caring. Happy. Pets. A quality of Jesus is hope. Sacrifice. Generous. Kind. Joy. Powerful. Love. Savior. Loving. Perfect. Jesus is love. For the Bible tell me so. Little ones in and belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Strong. <clears throat> yes, he just loves me. Loving. Yes, he just loves me. Loving. Yes, he just loves me. For the Bible tells me so. Say joy. Joy. So thank you so much. I'm so excited to get to see those faces, smile and share. What I'd also like, to, like for the kids to do on this Easter Sunday is perhaps you could grab some paint, a marker, a piece of paper and some scissors. And what I'm thinking is across our church, in our homes, we could paint, draw, color, post, tape a cross on our window. And this cross could be an opportunity for us to say that it is Easter Sunday and just represent what that cross means to us. That our community would know that Jesus, cross, Jesus Christ is risen, that he is alive, that he's working in our lives, and that we celebrate him on this day. Kids, I thank you so much for participating. I thank you for your artistic abilities. Why don't we uh, take a second and pray together. So repeat after me, kids. God, we thank you for the cross. We thank you that you're alive. We thank you that you're working, and we love you. Amen. Thanks, Randy, so much, and thanks, kids, for participating uh, in that way. It's wonderful to hear your thoughts about Jesus and what he means to you. We want to spend uh, a few moments now in prayer uh, for our church family, for our community, uh, for the nation and world. And I think many of us will know, we probably received word throughout the week, but uh, in case you didn't hear, I do want to just announce and be in prayer for the Vanderwall family. Diane Vanderwall uh, had a second stroke last weekend and has passed away. So we want to remember uh, her family in our prayers. So please join me as we pray. Father, we come to you at this time, and God, it's a time of great celebration. Uh, we celebrate that you are alive, you've risen from the grave, and there's hope. Uh, Easter has changed everything, and, and yet, God, we still live in this world, a world that is broken, a world in which there is so much suffering and so much death, and, and God, we are faced with that reality in, in ways uh, that are unprecedented uh, in recent memory. We lift up the Vanderwall family, God, we... As they grieve uh, Diane's passing, Lord, as we grieve with them, uh, Diane was 
uh, part of this community for so long. Lord, we pray that you would be close to her uh, family and friends in their grief. God, would you hold them close? Uh, would you be present with them? And particularly in this time, God, where uh, they can't gather, uh, we can't gather to remember Diane's life. And so, Lord, uh, as we grieve uh, in our homes and in different ways, would you be with us in that grief? We continue to lift up the Oshi family and ask God that you would be close to them in their grief and that you would pr continue, God, to keep them safe and protect them from uh, the COVID-19 virus. Father, we also pray that you'd be with Henny, Henny Scoot, Lord. Would you continue to bring healing uh, to her body and uh, be close to her? Continue, God, to walk with Simon and Alice Flores. Uh, we thank you that uh, their daughter, Nancy, was able to come this week and be with them to provide support and help. And we pray that you would continue to walk with them daily, God, uh, through the challenges that they face right now. And God, we think of the impact that many of us are facing. Lost jobs, uh, financial stress, the fears, the unknowns. God, uh, there's so much that's going on right now. And I just pray that you would bring your peace into each home and each heart uh, during these uncertain times. And as the pressures intensify and grow for many, God, I pray that you would bring uh, comfort, God. I pray that you would provide and bring provision. Father, we also pray for those on the front lines in our own community and many communities across our country, across the world, really, Lord. We think of uh, our medical care professionals, our nurses, our doctors, the other staff and support people in our hospitals and clinics. We think of our paramedics and firefighters and RCMP officers, Lord, all of our first responders, and we pray that you would protect them, that you would sustain them and care for them as they attend to those who aren't well. And Father, we pray for those grieving, uh, the death, the numbers of death uh, in our own province, country, world increases daily, representing so many families that are grieving, God, would you comfort and be with them. We pray for those working uh, tirelessly in labs to find treatments, to find vaccine. God, would you give them incredible insight and wisdom and skill, Lord, and we pray that you would open a way for a vaccine to be discovered and tested uh, soon. We pray for our, our leaders at provincial and federal levels, God, and municipal levels as well. Give them great wisdom and great strength, God, to continue to make decisions uh, on a daily basis in terms of our response. And Father, we pray uh, that you would continue uh, to walk alongside each one of us and all the emotions and things that this is stirring inside of us, God. Would you care deeply for each one? Would you be the strength uh, that we need would you be the refuge, the shelter that we can run to? And God, as we uh, turn our attention to your word, as we continue to worship in this time of this day of Easter celebration, would you now lead us and open uh, your word for us? We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. It's my pleasure to uh, share with you God's word this morning and it's a time of celebration. It's Easter Sunday. Christ is risen. Uh, he's risen indeed. Uh, that is the church's declaration, and, and, and it is our declaration on this Easter morning. But as we uh, begin, I, I want to speak directly uh, to you this morning about our present reality. At the time of recording this service, there are now over 1.6 million cases of COVID-19 around the world there are close to 100,000 deaths. No doubt by the time you watch this recording that those numbers, both of which, uh, will have increased. And there are so many realities behind these stats. These are not just numbers. These are the lives of people. People with families, people who had hopes and dreams, people who died alone, gasping to breathe. There's widespread fear, overwhelmed hospitals, makeshift hospitals, lockdown countries, a majority of the world's population living in self-isolation, social distancing, plans, hopes that have been dashed, 
lives turned upside down, economic turmoil, lost jobs, financial stress, the economy's been hammered. People are digging mass graves. There's a lot going on. And while all of this, all of these things are, are going on out there in, this, in our world, we all also have experienced a range of emotions going on inside of us as well. Fear, anxiety, worry for our own health, for the health of our loved ones, for our futures, for making ends meet, for keeping food on the table, for paying our mortgages and rent. Will the institutions and businesses that we love and support, will they even survive? We're overwhelmed, trying to manage our own emotions, but also care for our children and loved ones, helping our children connect to their teachers and school, of trying to fill their days with activities, struggling with how much screen time to allow. Parenting is hard right now. It's really hard. It's overwhelmingly hard. We've all felt anger, no doubt. Anger at different leaders for how they've handled this. Anger towards people that don't seem to take it seriously. Anger, disappointment, and all the things in our lives that have been disrupted, canceled, postponed. The list is long for many of us. You can start to feel numb. The grief and the sadness runs and cuts so deep. Those things that we looking forward to canceled. The people that we love and our support to us that we can't hug, we can't be with. Lives that have been turned upside down. Widespread suffering and death and we can't even gather to remember the lives of loved ones. We can't even hug our loved ones who've lost loved ones. And then there's the horrific stories from the front lines. It's awful. It's awful. We're deeply saddened. Many of us, if not numbed by what's going on, we're isolated, alone, more than ever. Almost as if we're imprisoned in our homes, cut off physically from people we love. Many of us are struggling to maintain good mental health in the midst of all that's going on outside of us and all that's going on inside of us. And so the question that we want to consider on Easter morning, it's in the face, in the face of all these realities going on out in the world, going on inside our hearts, and in the face of all this COVID-19 reality, where can we find hope? Where can we find hope? I'm here to declare to you that where we can find hope is primarily and centrally and vitally in the in the gospel of Jesus Christ and the Easter hope of this good news. Let me read our passage this morning, 1 Corinthians 15. I'm going to start by reading just the first four verses where we see this Easter hope of the gospel expounded. Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preach to you, Paul writes, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel you are saved, if you hold firmly to the word I preached to you. Otherwise, you've believed in vain. For what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the Scriptures. The Easter hope of the gospel, friends, is this. Because Christ is risen, the world is a different place now. The world's a different place. Like like the bulbs that are breaking through the springtime soil, Easter is the story of how God is bursting this world to springtime life again. The resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead is just the beginning. The dawning of a whole new world. A glimpse into what it means to be fully alive and to be fully human. A glimpse into where the world is headed, to where history is headed, where life is given a fresh start. 
This is what Christians believe when we declare, as we declare on this day, He is risen, He's alive. Jesus' resurrection it doesn't just mean that there's hope for life after death or that Jesus is alive again now so He can live in our hearts. It's so much more than that. It's so much bigger than that. The whole story of the world has reached its long-awaited climax. The story of the Creator God who has promised that He would address the evil of this world, that He would bring His joy, His justice, His peace to the world, that He would establish His gracious and loving reign on earth as it is in heaven. This story has reached its climax. This story is coming true because Jesus Christ rose from the dead. Jesus has done for the world what we could not do for ourselves. He's brought hope. He's brought light. He's brought life from outside, and there's nothing and nobody that can extinguish it. And think of it this way. Easter can handle anything, anything the world throws at it, even COVID-19. This is what the Easter hope of the gospel means. The story of Easter is a story that's central to the history of our world. Easter stands at the center of world history, giving history its purpose, its meaning, its direction. As Jesus rises again, something new has begun that one day will fill the whole earth. The world is a different place now. And like many of you, I've often wondered in the past few weeks, when will all of this end? When will life return to, to normal? And, and what in the world does normal even mean? What does that look like? Maybe you heard, as I did, the sobering words of our prime minister warning us, in, in a sense, that any potential return to some kind of normal is at least a year off. Hard words to hear. We're plunged into such widespread suffering and death on a global scale. And there's days, if not weeks, it can seem like this virus might just get the last word. COVID-19 maybe just gets the last laugh. Is there hope beyond COVID-19? Or will this virus forever change our lives and change the world? And as we think about that question, let me continue reading from our passage, this time jumping down to verse 14. If Christ has not been raised... Our preaching is useless, and so is your faith. More than that, we are then found to be false witnesses about God, for we have testified about God that he raised Christ from the dead. But he did not raise him if, in fact, the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, you're still in your sin. And then those who also who have fallen asleep in Christ, they're lost. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are to be pitied more than all people. What if everything I've been saying so far isn't true? What if Jesus really isn't resurrected on Easter morning? What if the Easter story is simply a myth? This is where our passage goes. These are the questions it provokes for us. If, if Jesus has not been raised to life, Christianity is a lie. We've believed and we've told others that the world's a different place, that there's hope, that there's peace and justice and joy that will last forever, that life has purpose, that life has meaning. But if Jesus has not been raised to life, then all of that's a lie. The world's not a different place. There is no hope. There is no future justice, peace, or joy. There is no meaning and purpose in life if Jesus has not been raised. Our faith is futile. It's a royal waste of time, in other words. And not only that, but all that's wrong with this world remains. The world isn't a different place. And all the things that we experience in this life, all the things that make something inside of us want to cry out, no, no, this can't be. This doesn't make sense. This isn't right. 
People should not have to die because there's not enough ventilators. Loved ones should not have to die alone. We shouldn't be running out of masks and putting our health care workers at risk. We shouldn't be turning our convention center into a makeshift hospital in case. We shouldn't be digging mass graves outside New York City. All the brokenness, all the suffering, the pain, the losses, all that's so terribly wrong with this world without Easter. All these things get the last word, the last laugh, if you will. Because without Easter, we have no hope for the world. No hope for any kind of future life that God has promised this world. No rescue from pain and suffering. No rescue from sin and evil. No rescue from death. No healing. Everything, everyone that we have lost, they're gone forever. Death has the final word without Easter. And so, as Paul says, we only live for the present. If Easter's not true, there's no future life. This is all there is. And if only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are to be pitied more than all people. But, but there is hope. The next verse. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who've fallen asleep. Jesus was just the beginning like the first fruit of the harvest that guarantees there's, there's more to come. So the resurrection of Jesus Christ on Easter morning guarantees that those who follow Jesus, those who identify with Jesus, they follow his path, and they are raised back to life after death, just as he was. You see, what's true of Jesus is now true of us. He's our champion. He acted on our behalf. What he won and what he accomplished is ours. He is raised to life after death, so, so we too will be raised to life after death. Resurrection hope, hope beyond death itself. That is the hope of Easter morning. And I can't help but think of those portable morgues in New York City. A photo taken outside Bellevue Hospital, a lineup of refrigerated trailers being turned into morgues. I can't help but think the long convoy of military trucks carrying bodies for burial near Milan, Italy. I can't help but think the bodies being left outside in cardboard coffins in the streets of Ecuador. I can't help but think the inmates in New York digging mass graves. Haunting, haunting images of the impact of COVID-19. I can't help but think of, of all that's been lost and yet to be lost. The impact, the devastation. Do our losses, do our, does our suffering, does it get the last word? Or are we just left with our grief unbearable as it is? The Easter hope of the gospel shouts loudly, No! No, they do not get the last word. There's hope beyond death. There's resurrection hope because Christ is risen and that changes everything. It changes everything. Do you see what resurrection hope means? As Tim Keller puts it, resurrection hope is, is not the same as saying, you know, when you die or, or when the world ends, we'll take you away from all this. You know, this has been a miserable sort of lot. We're just going to take you away from it. All this suffering, all this brokenness will take you away from it all. No. No, that's not what resurrection hope is. The Bible doesn't offer us consolation or removal from everything. It, it offers us resurrection. It says heaven, heaven's going to come to earth. We're not going to be taken away from earth into heaven. No, no, heaven's coming down to earth. It's going to renew everything. 
Everything bad and everything sad is going to come untrue. Do you see what this means and what this feels like in a time like ours? The things that were broken in this life and in this world, the things that were ruined, the things that were lost, the people that we've lost, the plans canceled, the dreams dashed, the hopes lost, even the things we never got to, the places we never saw, the graduation ceremony we never had, the books that we never wrote, the music we never composed, it's going to all be resurrected. It's all going to be renewed. It's all going to be brought back. It's all going to be even more glorious for having once been lost to us. There's Easter hope. It's hope for resurrection. And one day, one day we're going to awaken to resurrection life only to discover this all the pain that we've endured, all the agony and sorrow and suffering, all the losses that we've grieved, all the people that were lost to us, all of it is no longer going to be true. It's no longer going to be true. COVID-19 will, along with all other catastrophes and losses and pandemics, will no longer be true. And everything and everyone that we thought was lost to us will be returned to us, brought back to us, restored and renewed. I cannot, I cannot wait for that day. And the agony of having lost so much, the sorrow, the heartaches of the pain and suffering that we've endured and have yet to endure, will actually make that future even more glorious. The greater the depths of our sorrow and suffering and pain that we are lifted from on that day will only heighten and intensify the joy and glory of that day. And COVID-19 cannot take this hope from us. Easter can handle anything that the world throws at it, even its worst. There's hope now. There's hope in the future. There's hope beyond death. There's hope, Easter hope, that we need more than ever right now. And the hope of Easter is good news for the whole world. Amen. Let me pray. God, we thank you for this hope of the gospel, this Easter hope of the gospel that's ours. God, we desperately need it right now. Facing the realities that we do, both outside of us in the world and inside of us, if we're honest, the, the effect it's having on us, God, is significant. And so with this hope of the gospel, would it, would it root itself deep, deep into our soul, into our hearts? Would it break hardened soil and birth new hope, new life inside of us, God? Something that even COVID-19 cannot and will not extinguish. Hope now. Hope knowing that the world is a different place. Christ is risen. Hope for the future. COVID-19 does not get the last word. Christ does. Resurrection life does. Hope for life after death. Everything we've lost will be restored and resurrected. God, hold us firmly in this hope. And renew that hope in our hearts. Renew our joy and the peace that comes through Christ, our risen Lord. He's risen. He's risen indeed. Amen. Amen. I want to invite you uh, to once again return to that Easter playlist that we've created. And there's one more song on that list that I want to invite us to worship using that song together. It's the song, Because He Lives. And so as I close, I just invite you to go there and, and worship with that song. And, you know, if God leads you to go back to some of the other songs from earlier in the service, do that as well. Let's worship our risen Lord together, our risen Savior. And let's dwell today and in the days to come in this Easter hope, this Easter good news.
Good news for us, good news for the world in the face of COVID-19. Now receive the Lord's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you his peace. And may his blessing rest on you, on your home, on your family, on your loved ones. The blessing of his love and his grace. Be blessed and be a blessing. Amen. Thank you.